a very good morning to all of you this is dr kostub and we are here to discuss the crisis that is brewing in the state of hormuz let us look at the geography first state of hormuz connects persian gulf with gulf of oman as you can see here iran is to its north oman and united arab emirates are to its south this becomes a strategic choke point the reason being it is just 33 km wide at its narrowest point this is geo strategically very very significant because just look at the data 40% of world's traded oil 20% of globally consumed oil and nearly one third of world's lng liquefied natural gas passes through this area all this is produced in persian gulf why has it become a uh, flash point today the basics is that when the ships move through this area they pass through the territorial waters now this term is given in united nations convention of on law of the sea they were through pass through the territorial waters of iran and oman these two countries insist on the application of a principle called principle of innocent passage that is they can allow passage of ships which are not military and which they do not sense as a threat here usa contests the application of this clause because us military the fifth fleet is located at bahrain in the gulf us says that it is located there just to ensure that the strait remains open here there is another complicating factor that the un clause has not been ratified by all the parties in the region or otherwise so even usa is not a uh, has not ratified this united nations convention this area because of this uh, conflicting stance on basic issues has resulted into a flashpoint or it, it generates tensions every now and then it is clear that recently uh, it is clear from the statement that uh, shinzo abe the prime minister of japan recently made in japan uh, this iran he warned that region could accidentally slip into conflict and we recently saw how he also proposed a dialogue between iran and united states of america but iran rejected the dialogue because according to iran trump is not trustworthy here uh, the crisis is not new in 1988 operation praying mantis of united states of america was conducted just to ensure that the state remains open the crisis of 2011 and 12 also occurred because iran had threatened to close the strait now why iran uh, goes back to the hormuz time and again the reason is when you step on the nerve the basic lifeline of iran that is oil look at the numbers 80% of iran's public revenue is obtained from oil ex exports and here present crisis also uh, is because of the same reason that us usa has uh, imposed sanctions against iran and there have been attempts to isolate iran economically and strategically by united states of america uh, look at the chart iranians oil exports if you look at the numbers from june 2018 al jazeera uh, numbers you see india china south korea japan are the leading countries so south asia is the major buyer of iranian oil then it is european countries but all of them are reducing slowly and steadily the oil that they import because of the sanctions imposed by the united states of america and that is really hurting iranian oil or iranian revenue recent attacks have occurred in may here and then uh, a couple of days ago they were here so suspected tankers are attacked here also there have been attacked by use of drones on the pipelines that uh, are operated by saudi arabia and they carry tend to carry the oil from uh, persian gulf to the red sea and bypass the state of hormuz now let us analyze this the point is the hostilities between united states of america and iran go back to history when the american consulate was attacked in iran because of the shah of iran who had who was a puppet of united states of america and had uh, escaped to us and us refused to give him back to the uh, iranian iranian people now here these economic sanctions are also interpreted by iran as an attempt to change the regime so iran's view is economic warfare what are sanctions they are economic warfare designed to elicit regime change the world and america especially suspects that the mines which blew up the tankers were planted by iran there have been drone attacks i've told you right houthis now houthis are based in yemen this is a rebel group and these are the people who are shia and are supported by iran now these houthis tend to attack saudi pipelines that transfer the oil or gas from persian gulf to red sea especially the port of yanbu al bahar which is in saudi arabia now reports there have been reports on this crisis and uh, these attacks and the reports blame attacks on unnamed state actor now here the state means there is a reference to iran but un panel of experts says that iran supplies weapons to houthis but they don't always act at iranian behest so this also gives a hint maybe houthis are a part of attack or there are other non state actors especially the military wing the revolutionary guards of iran who may have played a role in this crisis international crisis group also says that rising tensions incidents are almost unavoidable so the inherent tensions among the parties makes it a uh, 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 i mean like a volcano it can blow any time next let us look at the process what has happened 
the root cause of the cause of the present crisis goes back to the JCPOA. This is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which was signed by uh, ex-president of United States of America, Barack Obama, and a statesman. He had brought Iran to the negotiating table, signed the deal, and evolved a consensus around the nuclear issue and involved the P5 in the deal. However, election of Trump, US withdrew from JCPOA cornered Iran, imposed economic sanctions, and that is why Iran became defiant and announced that we will enrich uranium now. Now, this has resulted into military threats from United States of America, along with economic isolation. Now, this has resulted into escalation of hostilities in the region. Now, look at the players which operate in this area. United States of America, Israel, and Russia, major players. Now, here, US interest or actions in this region are guided by the security and uh, economic interest of Israel. Russia goes against the United States of America because it wants to preserve its own presence in the Middle East. The Arab states, especially Saudi Arabia and UAE, are US allies. Here, Iran is isolated by these two countries regionally because they see Iran as challenging their supremacy in the region. Russia supports Iran because, again, uh, the Syria factor Plus, Iran ensures or Iran also uh, uh, preserves Russian presence in the uh, or supports Russian presence in the Middle East. Now, immediate cause, though it seems that USA and Iran are the problem, there are regional, as I said, regional supremacy between these two blocks and religious divide because Iran is Shia, Saudi Arabia is Sunni and then there is a conflict between them. How the world sees it, we are concerned about terrorism because no one claims those attacks presently. So, this conflict and these many players result into rise of terrorism in the region and then the world economics is also affected. Now what options do US allies have? They can go for frontal retaliation but they will not do that the reason being it would hurt their own economy. Second is they'll complain to Uncle Sam that is America. Here we have to figure in the Trump factor the uncertainty associated with Donald Trump. We have seen that in case of North Korea also. So his actions may vacillate if you read today's newspaper it is uh, military threat that he's saying so m threats of military uh, intervention to dialogue so uh, it's not consistent position that us is taking presently now why is iran forced to go back to hormuz every now and then it's a parthian shot or a parting shot by iran iran considers hormuz as a negotiating chip negotiating bargain because it is oil rich and everything passes the, from hormuz and then iran can choke it because of its strategic location so reasserting its control or supremacy over the hormuz is one uh, major tool available in the Iranian hand. Second, it tends to preserve the centrality of Hormuz. The reason being, if Saudi Arabia is constructing pipelines from Persian Gulf to Saudi, uh, Red Sea, it's going to bypass the Hormuz. And anything that bypasses the Hormuz reduces the Iranian uh, dominance. That is why uh, attacks on those uh, pipelines signify that Iran pre preserves or tends to preserve the centrality of the Hormuz. Now, we should also understand why US has become so belligerent when it comes to Middle East. The reason being, US is ready to take the risk. Nothing affects it. It is because of the immunity provided by shale discovery in the United States and the production of shale is rising. So, it doesn't need anything from the Persian Gulf now. What are the implications of this crisis? It comes at an actually bad time. The reason being, it's, it's not good for global peace and security. The nuclear issue, Iran may, defiant Iran, may go for nuclear enrichment and it... it is uh, it may destabilize the region as well as the globe second bad news for global economy already the economy is suffering from tra ongoing trade war between major countries especially us china and now impact on indian interest definitely india was one of the leading buyers of iranian oil it uh, iran offered many uh, attractive lucrative terms to indian buyers of oil and here india has to renegotiate its energy contracts and economics uh, indian economy is also affected because of stop or reduction in iranian oil needs to focus on so if you believe the indian experts we need to focus on gas based economy to replace oil because then it it will shield india from this shocks because of geostrategic problems to avoid energy crisis india has increased oil imports from saudi arabia and signed contracts with companies based in algeria and norway and even us is offering to sell oil to india so that is about india now major takeaways from this uh, issue first the issue of leadership you can see Obama, a statesman, a president of United States of the president, former of uh, United States of America. He evolved consensus around this issue. He broke the uh, gap between India, uh, sorry, Iran and USA, and and made contact with uh, the leadership and brought them to the negotiating table. So that is what the world needs now. Second is Abi, like the uh, Prime Minister of South Korea, Moon, who negotiated between US and uh, North Korea. Abi, the Prime Minister of Japan, tried to play such a role between US and. Iran. Third is Trump. 
Now, this is really a bad news because presence of Trump brings in uncertainty and then US becomes too unpredictable. And that is what even Rouhani, the leader of Iran, mentioned recently to Shinzo Abe that till there is Trump, we can't trust America. So, first issue is leadership. Second, are the factors that go into play in this crisis. One is geopolitics. Obviously, the regional supremacy and the uh, uh, game is between Iran and Saudi Arabia is creating a lot of tension in this region. Second is the nuclear issue. Third is the oil economics. And last is the weapon industry because any tension or conflict provides lucrative market to the, to the oil industry. No, sorry, weapon industry. Next, uh, what can be the solution to this problem? Three Ds. First is the democratic approach as was evolved by Barack Obama. We need to bring the global powers and the regional powers on table, negotiating table and solve this through uh, dialogue and diplomacy. So uh, opening a line of communication is the only option. Otherwise, then if, if both countries or parties go for rhetoric, then uh, very soon we may see the tensions escalating. And then this is a test for diplomacy, not only uh, the regional but the global diplomacy to ensure peace because anything that spills into what happens in uh, Middle West will have impact on a global scale. We need to remember Mahatma Gandhi who had said that I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil that it does is permanent. With all this, uh, this is all from my side on State of Hormuz. I'll be returning with other issues also. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, have a very nice day. Thank you.